I'm Keith Olbermann and this is The Resistance. His daily behavior getting weirder and weirder and weirder, like today. His candidacy nearly ended by the pussy grabber tape. He has now been reported to have become, as president, verbally and grossly fixated on the breasts of a translator during a meeting with the Japanese prime minister. His grasp of history doubted during the campaign when he repeated the tabloid gossip that Senator Cruz's father was involved in a presidential assassination, gave a speech suggesting most people don't know which political party the first Republican president belonged to, his intellectual capacity questioned during the transition when he reportedly revealed he thought NATO members paid dues to the United States. He, as president, reportedly directly demanded to the Chancellor of Germany that her country pony up $375 billion. His campaign manager convinced microwave ovens, not microwaves, but microwave ovens can turn into cameras. And his transition team on the record asking about using tanks during the inaugural parade like this was May Day 1962 at the Kremlin. And a guy on Fox News who used to be Glenn Beck's vacation relief insisting Trump told him he was on the short list for the Supreme Court. With all that, I want to ask a question I first asked a year ago. Could Donald Trump pass a sanity test? With the help of a couple of professionals in the field and using only Trump's own words and actions, I scored him on an actual 20-question screening test for psychopaths. The most you could get is 40 points. The threshold for probably being a psychopath is 30 points. Trump's words and actions got him 32 points. And he could still finish life as high as 36 points, since two of his questions pertain to criminal record and violation of parole, and there's plenty of time for him on both. Short answer, Trump could not pass a sanity test then or now, open book. This little problem is, of course, disastrous in a presidential candidate, though the minority of roughly 63 million who voted for him either did not notice he was the craziest nominee of all time or chose to ignore it. But in a president, the problem escalates to, you know, the possible end of the world. First, the thing with the purported invoice he handed, literally or figuratively, to Angela Merkel, the thing that happened just before this happened, according to the Times of London, which has kept its credibility more or less intact since 1785, or which didn't happen, according to a White House that has already spent all its credibility as of day 68. This isn't hard to grasp, and anybody sane whose parents were alive during World War II grasped it as kids because our parents saw the Germans as Nazis, and even they understood why suddenly they had to accept the Germans as friends. Geographically, Germany is essential to American security. It is our symbolic front line against Russia, and Russia's primary geopolitical goal since 1945 has been to break up the German-American alliance. Politically, Germany is essential to American security because the last time we pushed it away after World War I, when it rose again, it was powerful enough by itself to start World War II. If we help it with its self-defense, even if we pay a little more of the freight than it does, we are, in fact, paying for our self-defense. Instead, and by the way, the source for the Times of London story is a minister of the German government, Trump handed Merkel a bill for a supposed shortfall since 2002 with interest. This is nuts, done by a guy who's nuts. Then there's the translator story. Graydon Carter, the editor of Vanity Fair, vintage Trump is not going anywhere anytime soon. A couple of weeks earlier, during a visit by the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, the president told an acquaintance that he was obsessed with the translator's breasts, although he expressed this in his own fragrant fashion. You can decide which of several vulgar terms Trump might have used about the woman, which bit of locker room talk, the euphemism by which Trump so cynically and successfully made his boasts about sexual assault vanish during the campaign. The point is, nobody at the White House even bothered to deny that story. Why would they? Trump is already disconnected enough from reality to presume he has the right to talk that way now and disconnected enough from reality that he not only got the Prime Minister's name backwards, but the tweet in which he got it backwards and called him Prime Minister Shinzo, as if he wanted you to call him President Donald, that tweet is still in his timeline and uncorrected, as is every other crazy thing he's done just since becoming President uncorrected. The Obama wiretapped me hoax, 
blaming the Muslim ban airport chaos on Delta computer problems, reportedly bringing his own fanboys with him to applaud during his speech at the CIA, the whole inauguration crowd size delusion, the three million illegal votes delusion, the five million illegal votes delusion, praying at the National Prayer Breakfast for Arnold Schwarzenegger's ratings, not knowing Frederick Douglass is dead when he's been dead since 1895, and what is to me, the surest sign of reality disconnect, the craziest thing so far, possibly worse than all the other ones combined. If you have not seen this yet, please sit down, surrender eight seconds of your life that you will never get back, and pray there is a God to help us, and let Trump fill you in on one of the great secrets of American history about a president named Abraham Lincoln? Great president. Most people don't even know he was a Republican, right? Does anyone know? A lot of people don't know that. No, hadn't heard. Who knew? Let that sink in. Huge if true, game changer. I'll just leave that here. Life comes at you fast. Mic drop. Are you effing kidding me? Lincoln, the first Republican president, on Mount Rushmore, face on the $5 bill and on the penny, only president on the front page of the GOP website besides Trump, and Trump thinks most people don't even know he was a Republican? And in context, it's even worse. Trump made that claim to the annual National Republican Congressional Committee fundraising dinner. Hey, did you guys ever hear about this fella, Reagan? That was the moment I thought back on that sanity test and wondered if maybe he could score not 32 out of 40, but 42 out of 40. Resist. Peace.